This is a Spree Model Network TV and you're watching How To Jetty Programming. Today I'm joined with James who will help us explain a little bit more about how to program your Jetty 2.4 duplex transmitter. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. James with the Spree Model. Uh, today we're going to go over basic setup in your DS14, DS16, and DC16 radio. Uh, we're going to show you a simple four to five channel airplane setup to get you started. It's typically what most people start with. I've already got the radio turned on. We're at our initial screen. Uh, we're going to hit the menu button. That's going to bring up our main menu. Uh, for what we're doing today, we're going to select model using the function button. Uh, we're going to scroll down on the model screen to new model. We're also going to hit the function button there. That brings up our new model entry screen. The first step in setting up any new model, apart from building and in installing your servos and things, uh, is naming the model. It's critical. You can't progress past this step. Uh, if you're having a hard time setting up a model, take a look and make sure you entered a name. We're going to, with the, with the name block highlighted, we're going to hit the function button. It's going to bring up our edit screen. We're going to go ahead and give the model a name. We're going to go ahead and, and name this model, Model 1. We use the scroll wheel to highlight the letters we want. Use the function key to select those letters. You'll see them appearing in the uh, title bar there. Once you have that entered, give me just a second, get that finished up here. And if you do make a mistake like I just did, you can use the function keys under the screen. You'll see a back arrow there. So you can hit that twice. Go ahead and, and continue on with what you are doing. Uh, model 1 is entered. Once you've got that, it says what you want to do. You hit the OK button on the screen or the function button below the word OK. Uh, now we have a name entered. We can progress forward. So the next thing we need to do is select a model type. So we use the scroll wheel to highlight model type. Enter the function key. That allows us to choose between the three options listed, arrow, heli, or general. Uh, we're going to build an airplane today, so let's go ahead and select arrow. We'll hit the function key to select it. You'll see the word next appear on the screen. You hit the function button below the word next. It'll move you forward. Uh, the next thing we get to is our basic property screen. The first part of basic property screen is the wing type. Uh, you'll notice that, that you can scroll between the, the wing type and tail type. You're going to highlight wing type. Hit the function button. That'll highlight the section that shows what type of wing you're building. And if, if you'll scroll through with me, you'll notice that you actually change the pictogram and change the text above it. Uh, indicated there is a one flap, two aileron, two flap, two aileron, uh, two flaps and four ailerons. There are quite a few mixes available there. So you select the one that most matches what you're going to build. Today we're going to do zero flaps and two ailerons. Once I have the correct one there, I hit my function button. You'll see it go back to highlighting the full line. Then you can scroll down to tail type, hit the function button again, and now you can adjust the tail type. We're going to be building a conventional tail, single horizontal, single vertical. You'll notice normal 1H, 1V. If you scroll through, you can see the various tail types, V tail, elevators, normal two horizontal, two vertical tail, uh, and then of course none, which would be your elevon and del delta settings. Uh, we're, like I said, we're going to build a normal one horizontal, one vertical tail. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, scroll to that text, hit the, the function button, and again you'll see the word next appear on the screen. Hit the function button below that and you can move to the next screen. Uh, next screen is your function assignment screen. This is where you assign the functions on the radio. Uh, so this is where you decide you know, that, that this is your aileron and this is your elevator. Uh, there's a couple of things to look at here. If you use the scroll wheel, you can highlight each individual function. Um, we'll go ahead and highlight the aileron function. If you hit the, the select button, that activates that line. Now you can change the function, change the control input, change the trim, and then set the trim max. What we're going to do here is I'll show you how to change the control function or, or move that function around on the radio. You'll highlight under control, which currently you can see that it's P1. If you move your move the gimbal, uh, you'll notice the box highlights up and down. It changes so you can see that it's active. Uh, if you hit the enter button while, you, while that's highlighted, 
uh, that'll take you to the select input control. Currently we're on P1. Now you can very clearly see that P1 activates that control. Uh, if you make a decision you don't want P1 on that particular control, you simply clear it, hit the CLR button on the screen. Uh, that opens the select input control screen. Now you simply activate the control that you'd like to use and now it is entered. So now our aileron function is on our right hand slider. Uh, obviously most people won't leave it there but that gives you an idea how to adjust control functions. All control functions are set the same way through the radio. Uh, if you want to change that you simply hit the button below clear again and move the stick that you want to select for that function. We'll go ahead and take a look through. All of the functions are very simple mode 2 uh, functions. So we have our elevator, aileron, throttle, and rudder all in the co correct controls. So once we've gotten to that point, we can hit next. Here is our servo assignment. A uh, little different with Jetty. Uh, there's no preset pins in a standard Jetty receiver. Uh, they're simply labeled one through whatever number of channels are available in that receiver. Uh, so what you do is you build your aircraft, install the receiver, how it m most makes sense, plug all of your aileron and elevator and rudder and all of your servo leads in. Uh, once you have that done, you write down on a card where you plugged each thing in, you come to your servo assignment screen, and this is where you can assign each individual pin on a receiver. Uh, if engine doesn't plug into, engine is your throttle, if engine doesn't plug into port 1, then we can simply highlight engine hit our function button and scroll through and now we can change that function. Now make sure that you have functions only once where you need them. Uh, you'll notice if there's multiple ailerons like we selected those will occupy two pin locations but those can be moved or changed through the servo assignment screen. Uh, once you have that set the way that you want it and the way that you've wired it into the aircraft you can simply I'm going to hit the escape button to, to, to back out to the highlight screen. Go ahead and hit next and that'll move you on. Uh, next question is create and activate model. Once you have those first initial basic setups done, you can create and activate the model that you've just worked on. You hit the yes. That will save that model into the system and all your, all your settings that you've done. Uh, from here you move into a little more advanced setups. We're going to go ahead and stop here. We'll cover that in the next video, so make sure you tune in. Thank you.